Hello and welcome to South Asia Focus. I'm Smita Prakash. Security experts from South Asia have sounded a warning in the region that though terror outfits like the Islamic State or ISIS have not yet established themselves here, they are looking to gain a foothold. And that could happen initially by joining with terror groups that have ideological similarities. Here is a report. The Islamic State controls large parts of territory in Syria and Iraq where it has declared an Islamic caliphate and has attracted misguided Muslim youth from many corners of the world. The group emerged from the remains of the US-led invasion to oust Saddam Hussein as Al-Qaeda in Iraq and the insurgency that followed provided it with the perfect situation to declare a guerrilla war against the coalition forces and their domestic allies. Expressing worry over the use of modern technology by terrorist groups like ISIS in reaching out to wider sections of the society, India's Home Minister Rajnath Singh has said that he was very happy that the effect of Islamic State on the Indian youth was insignificant. Mr. Singh said that the Islamic State had completely failed to attract Indian Muslims because of the community's complete assimilation into the national mainstream. I am happy to know that the influence of Islamic State on the Indian youth is negligible. According to our intelligence agencies, just a handful of Indian youth have joined the ISIS. Some have also returned after being persuaded by their family members. The failure of ISIS to attract Indian Muslims who constitute the second largest Muslim population in the world is due to their complete integration into the national main stream. In December last year, Indian police arrested a popular pro-Islamic state Twitter handler from India's IT hub Bangalore. Mehdi Masood Biswas, who police said, was behind the Shami witness Twitter handle. Indian security analyst Shorya Dowal said the government alone cannot fight terrorism. He said the support of the society is equally critical in the battle against terrorism. That counter-terrorism is not just the exclusive domain of the state, but is a wider thing of the society. And a society to evolve comprehensive counter-terrorism strategies, it is important that the society be involved in this exercise along with law enforcement practitioners. India has the world's third largest Muslim population, but they have for the most part stayed away from extremist Islamist groups. Police say only four Indians are known to have joined Islamic State fighters and one had since returned and is in custody. Sri Lanka's former army chief and currently a security expert, Sarath Fonseca, said the expansion of Islamic State was indeed a cause for concern and asked all nations in the region to join hands to fight their expansion plans. Uh, but they look dangerous at the moment. So uh, I think the, the, they are uh, active in certain area, certain region at the moment. Uh, but then if given the chance, they will try to uh, expand. They will try to uh, extend their activities to other countries. So we have to, uh, we must not waste time, basically. Everybody must try to put maximum effort pro everything and try to uh, get rid of this problem very early. Dr. Amrullah Saleh, former Afghanistan intelligence chief and counter-terrorism expert said that Afghanistan had suffered a lot due to terrorism and that there was no difference between Taliban and the ISIS. In a report based on interviews with more than 100 alleged victims and witnesses of the ISIS, the UN Human Rights Office urged the UN Security Council to refer the issue to the International Criminal Court to prosecute the culprits. Chief UN investigator Suki Nagra said that no community had been spared from the barbaric attacks of the Islamic State. No community has been spared in Iraq from ISIL's violence, um, including the Yazidis, the Christians, Turkmen, Sabamandians, Kakai, Kurds, Shia and indeed the Sunni. Um, essentially what we're seeing is the rich ethnic and religious diversity in um, Iraq that's been shattered completely. The report further added that the Islamic State has treated captured women and children as poles of war, often subjecting them to rape or sexual slavery. 
critical for lasting peace and to deter Islamic State from South Asia is Pakistan cracking down on terror groups operating within its borders. Many Pakistani terror groups, including the Taliban, have pledged support to the ISIS. Security expert Raj Kadin blamed Pakistan's continued support to terror outfits for the prevailing vulnerable security situation in South Asia. Now these attacks, unless we tackle Pakistan, uh, Pakistan wants to continue with the talks. Talks are important between two countries. If the problem has to be resolved, the talks must go on. But the talks cannot go on under the shadow of the gun. India has made it very clear. We had put three conditions. Number one, you stop. Uh, ceasefire violation, which good thing they have reduced because we retaliated very, very strongly. Secondly, we have told them to stop terror attacks, which has not happened. In fact, they have started again. And third, of course, we had told them that you will talk to us. It's a bilateral issue and not talk to any Hurriyat leader. That, unfortunately, they have again violated. Their high commissioner in Delhi has met the Hurriyat leaders. I don't think that is the correct way to start the talks. If they want to talk to the country, let the two countries responsible who are ruling, uh, they should get involved in the talks and find an amicable solution that people deserve to live in peace in all states of India. India has long blamed Pakistan for supporting militants who cross from the Pakistan side of the border to attack Indian forces. Pakistan has on its part denied the charge. In fact, on Friday, March 20th, after a brief lull, militants stormed into a police camp in Katwa district of Kashmir, which is about 15 kilometers from the border with Pakistan. Three security personnel lost their lives, while two militants were gunned down in the attack. These are part of a continuous effort. Up, uh, if you just take the past uh, this year, we've already seen two major attacks before this uh, in Pulwama, Tral and uh, Shopian. And there have been several smaller attacks as well. Uh, these are, from a Pakistani perspective, ISIS perspective, terrorist perspective, necessary if they are even to keep the movement alive. If they do not keep on engaging in occasional attacks, people will believe that the movement has ended and they will begin to defect, they will begin to leave, uh, the few sympathizers will begin to drift away from the movement. The other thing is that uh, Whenever there is a political context of some degree of tension or instability, and that we saw in the recent past, it was provoked by the uh, release of Masarrat Alam. So uh, they will always try to compound these tensions by engaging in terrorist activities. And that is really what we are seeing. There is nothing extraordinary in these attacks. Uh, Former Pakistani diplomat Hussain Haqqani condemned the Katwa attack and even said that Pakistan must come forward and help India in finding out what groups were behind it. Pakistan's government continues to say that it is trying to eliminate terror and efforts have been started, but they are not enough. Pakistan needs to essentially make clear to the world and to India that no jihadi group will have any safe haven in Pakistan anymore. The acceptance and tolerance towards jihadi groups over the past has really harmed Pakistan more than any other country in the region. I think today's attack should be not only condemned by Pakistan, but Pakistan should extend cooperation to India in finding out which groups based in Pakistan are behind it. Only then can the confidence be built which will enable Pakistan and India to move forward in a comprehensive dialogue. Laying quite a lot of blame on Pakistan for fueling terrorism in South Asia, American security expert Bruce Riedel in an essay says, the domestic politics of Pakistan are central to this drama and to this threat. Adding, in short, the Pakistani army and its ISI spies are once again playing with fire, with India, the LET and Kashmir, in order to secure domestic gains against the civilian leaders. The dispute over Kashmir has been the reason for three of the four wars between India and Pakistan since 1947. The region is administered in parts by both and India blames Pakistan for supporting an uprising in Indian Kashmir. India refuses to call it a dispute, claiming that even the part that is in Pakistani control is illegally occupied by Pakistan. For many decades, Pakistan's army has treated extremist groups and jihadi outfits as assets to use against India. 
but these groups have turned table and started attacking the Pakistani establishment, including the army, politicians and media. With many Pakistani terror groups supporting ISIS, the onus is on Pakistan more than any other country in South Asia to nip this nexus in the bud. More on that in the coming episodes. Thank you for watching South Asia Focus.